Yes, this is a, a part uh, of my record. Proud of my record. Not so easy to educate. 14, uh, I, I, I think around 30 when I retire, maybe up to 30 or 35 something for the PhD uh, student. And more than uh, 50 general paper. And I got the national dominant research in 2014. And also the state committee of PAKDD, uh, Pacific Association of Knowledge Discovery and Data Mining. So very big uh, uh, conference that people, the one who want to challenge for the advanced one, need to submit to the KDD or PAKDD. I think uh, some of you is a uh, research, you know, uh, this one. And also the Jai Chair Professor. I also involved in the PKI. Pacific Lim International Conference on AI. Okay, and I also know the Ichigai, IJCAI. And we have connection with the JSAI, Japan Society of AI. Okay. So, and in terms of Thomasat, uh, I have the group that working on the intelligent formatic speed and language technology and service innovation. So we try to make uh, the service uh, that include the AI to make innovation. So the part of them is, uh, so maybe I just move this here. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, so knowledge engineering, human language technology, intelligent informatics, or big data mining. For example, I build the Thomasat map with the, 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 the bus tracking here, or try to make the system for Sumfit model. So from now, we have the, for example, the electric car, and information about the traffic on the road near the Skumbit. Okay, and I, uh, we have the website that relates to the medical database and show, and you can click the link. And this is in Thai, sorry. And also the GPS, collect the data of them and then show this. And also the, like the summarization, new summarization. <coughs> yeah, collect the data from news and then summarize them. For example, the idea networking, or part of, uh, get a lot of the uh, awards here. So ma many uh, the people in my group working on this. Yeah, for example, this one, the medical database web, and it's shown as like this. Or collect the data related to the Bangkok. So take from many places and then summarize them. Uh, we think about the summarize for the people also, in order to know the expertise of people in Thailand. Okay, so we have the, when you find the human resources who, who are expert in what, so you can come to our website. All new summarization like this, collect the new for many places. Some of them are same, but slightly different uh, fact because of mistyping or something. So we can, uh, we can make that, that one, the clarify that one. Beam summing, blah, blah, blah here. I think I, I will make a bit quick because uh, Maybe uh, IBM can do the presentation. So this is just only introduce my, my research work here. And also working on the detecting the part of the car. Right now, they are really object detection. It's really popular right now. Detect the part of the car and understand this is a car. Okay, or this is the part of uh, the view of the car, blah, blah, blah here. Okay, yeah. Or graduation ceremony, we tracking the people, the student who get the graduation, uh, graduation certificate in front of the king. Okay, so we track them in order to know who's, who stand in front of the king to receive the, the certificate, something like this. And uh, this is the tracking of this. And we also do some chatbot, uh, chatbot for the Tamasai. Yeah. In our group, uh, many people also we are working on uh, NLP like this or image processing, uh, cut the head, and then put the head on this in order to make the photo for graduation. Sometimes rental, this one costs uh, 900 baht or 800 baht. So you can uh, have this online, no need to rental the cloud. <laughs> Just only cut the head and put here, and then you make your own photo and submit to the, to the registration for your graduation, something like this. It's an simple one. And uh, like this, we're also working with the Thai reform around three years before, 2014. So we collect the people voice, and then we have the database of the people voice uh, who criticize which part of the government uh, policy 
and then we want to make reform. Okay, so we know the, the data and we collect many of them. Uh, this one, uh, a lot of people involved in this project. Okay, so, and I'm working on the NLP. There are many people in the NLP part, like Dr. Vilas, Dr. Sulapan, Dr. Chai, who will become the next tech uh, director, and Dr. Tep Chai, Sabbaba. So, search engine, OCR, speed recognition, blah, 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 here. And Gase Saad, yeah, Dr. Asani, Dr. Mukda, and, oh, Mukda, and, Hachatai, Dr. Hachatai, Dr. Pachia. So they're working on the agriculture, corpus, tea bank, uh, tech analysis, ontology, something like this. And for the KMUTT, we, we know someone. Working on machine translation, expert system, uh, query answering system, blah, blah, blah. And for this is uh, Dr. Uh, Sudaporn. So she's working on the speed synthesis or dictionary, talking dictionary, something like this, and tone recognition. Dr. Vilas work on the semantic web ontology or open link, open data, XML. Okay. Yeah, so myself and Dr. Lachada in the Samasan University. So we have a many university involved in our AIAT. Okay. So I want to just show you that uh, we have ma many members in, in this uh, organization. Okay. Uh, Chiang Mai University or Konkan University. So we have Dr. Latasik working on the passing uh, information extraction. So, Konken, Dr. Gandhi, Dr. Pusadi, and Songkha, University. Okay. KMATL, KMUTT. Yeah. Some part of them do working. I think uh, mainly uh, I show you NLP, but indeed we have image processing, and we also have IoT, uh, IoT like the wireless uh, communication, uh -huh, and also the Robotics, some part of the robotic control, something, yeah. And big data, big data, and big data. Okay, so we have some resources here. So in the I have a book that is uh, distributed online, so you can download this book. It's for free also. <laughs> it takes really long time to build this book also. So you can download from dataminingbook.org. It's in English, in English version. Okay. So this is in Thai. So we have uh, AI Association Thailand. We have it in, uh, this is 2016, uh, uh, 15, 2015, October 29. Okay. So around three years before. Uh, next month we will have three years, three years old. Okay, next month. And uh, the first time in Thammasat, but now we moved to here. Uh, the first time the office is in Thammasat. And we have uh, many people from Tamasa, Nectek, TU, blah, 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 here. Nectek, uh, Langsit, New City, uh, Mahidon, New City, or company. Okay. So many of them. Yeah, sorry. In, yeah, so we have uh, many activities. For example, PKI 2016, Valencia, uh, Symposium on SNLP, uh, National Language Processing, or ISAI. 2018, we arranged in uh, November. And IBM will be a part of the phone sponsor. Probably. Yeah. Go, go, go. Oh. <laughs> Silver or bronze. I want to be the co sponsor. Yeah, if possible, please. <laughs> co sponsor. Yeah, so we have also teaching the deep learning, blah, blah, blah. So over there. I will sh show you the website later. And this is the Facebook of us and uh, URL of our. Uh, association and we also have like group okay and this is 2018 in uh, Pattaya uh, November 15 to 17 so in the uh, Tom IBM can arrange some section over there if you want so you can arrange there so many uh, Thai people and outside also particularly Japan uh, a lot of them will join this but we have two events this event and the other event is KICS they are joint event together. Uh, KSSS uh, originally in the Japan. Okay. And this is already 13 years. Like the, the ISAI also 13. And they come together, co-locate at the Pattaya. So it's the same date. Okay. So if you come here, you can meet with two groups. One is the Thai researcher. And the other one is Japanese researcher. And also some international participants involved in these two conferences. Okay. Yeah, so we have uh, some resources that we have that one. I see. I just uh, let I roughly just only this. We have uh, many, many of the resources. 
that we uh, try to collect by ourselves. I think IBM can help some part, part of this <laughs> to arrange to have this one. Okay, thank you for, for uh, coming to AIAT. And let I show you only the website of AIAT. Yeah. Yes. So uh, this AIAT, we have a mini slide that provide, but this is in Thai. And we also have the, something like the, this, so they record the video, and then we put this video online also. So you can find the link of them here. And we have YouTube channel of AIAT also. So information about the AIT you can find from here. OK? Yeah, like this, a lot of them. OK, lastly, related to our uh, association, uh, just show you one more, uh, this one. So myself is the president, and Chan Thep Chai is the vice president, Chan Lachada, Chan Mao. Now, many of them are in the Big Bang. <laughs> Big Bang, that one, not here, because we have two events located okay, here. Chan Pokpong and Arthur from Arthur City, and Dr. Chai will be the next tech director. And Chan Pakpat, Chan Vilat, Chan Vilat, and Chan Asani, and Chan Chulilat. And we have uh, some associate failure committee like this. Some of them from outside here. And uh, far you city, far away. And we have uh, director is uh, yeah, Mr. Vasong here. He's the director of the AIT. And indeed, we should put the picture of Kun Hung there. <laughs> Kun Hung here. She is the, uh, he is the director and she is the manager. Nah? She is a manager and he is the director. I am the president. So we are three and then try to help this association, handle this association. Okay, thank you for coming to, and I briefly, if you have any question related to our association, please tell us. Allow 200, 300 academic people here, but we serve many 500, 600 of people who want to know about AI. <laughs> they are the user, but we have allowed 200 academic the people who are working on this and then can support us. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, so please welcome. And then I'll ask Chai to talk to you. Can you talk to me? Thank you, Chai. Thank you, Chai. So um, for today's session, um, IBM is... Um, Thank you for Ajahn to allow IBM team from the um, worldwide global team to share the IBM uh, AI technology to the um, AIAT and maybe to the public, which may benefit to all persons that are interested for, to, to de develop the AI. So mainly for today's content, um, IBM recently announced a new technology on the AI that we believe will be benefit to the whole you know, uh, people that interested in the AI, especially for the um, organization, a business company or in the government or university that would like to take on a new step that uh, take the AI into the real action. Right. Because the AI happened, you know, um, start, I believe, 30, 40 years ago, but it's rarely, you know, applied to the business or the real action. That's why IBM, uh, we have a research lab. We have a lot of the uh, technology and we would like to bring this to the uh, association and the, the community. So uh, today we have um, uh, uh, two um, SME from IBM uh, Canada, Toronto, uh, Lenita and Yongkang to provide, uh, uh, we can say that today uh, maybe an introduction and briefly on the new technology that we announced to the, to the market. Okay. So okay. Yeah, we have a record. So this one also we keep in our website. Even the one, uh, I think they make the, the live. Oh. <laughs> the live content also. Ah, yeah, okay. so um, the, even though people uh, don't hear, so they can see it. Clap, clap. Okay, so <laughs> maybe uh, let um give the session to Alenita. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you need? I don't think I need a microphone. I could. I'm pretty loud as it is. Oh yes. So, <laughs> so if I want to come up, please. Let me 
say this. Get the technology, the hard technology out of the way and see if we could yes. see this. So, uh, <laughs> this is okay to show this can be like here. It's okay. okay. <laughs> so it's just, it's just pointing to here, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you for, for having us. Um, we're, we're very honored to be here and uh, very appreciate uh, you having the time to listen to the solutions that IBM has in terms of this space. Yep. Uh, really appreciate that the association has that and the scientists and professors in the field doing the science. What we're trying to do here is to simplify everything else that's not the data science, helping with the whole workflow. Yeah. So um, as uh, Shishwara Chai has, has introduced us, we're from Toronto. I am a global system architect for uh, some of the solutions in IBM associated with the deep learning. Yeah. And Dan Bang is a distribution engineer. Yeah, yeah we, we're part of uh, IBM uh, company system division. Uh, you know, IBM has uh, IBM Watson, mm -hmm. uh, which builds solutions for natural language processing, conversation, vision, all the different topics in the services. Okay. And we part of the IBM cognitive system. We build the cognitive infrastructure platform to make the big standard uh, simpler. So uh, a little um, introduction about the brain and what we represent as part of the solution. So we come from the platform computing company that was acquired by IBM about six years ago. And some of our technology has gone through many high performance applications, including the Rebel team. The Rebel team has used our technology for car design to race stage, strategic strategy, and uh, lots of analytics and lots of big data involved. As you can imagine, during the race, they have a lot of uh, sensor data. Yeah. And they're, they're doing analytics yeah. against yeah. that in real time to figure out what's yeah. the best drive. Yeah. When, when should the car come in? When should the car get um, get tires changed out? Things like that. So um, we have a heritage of, learning, of doing a lot of big data analysis, high performance, high throughput robots. So as you can see, that will apply to big data and, and AI. Oh. Hey, you said the sensor on the car. Where the there are lots of different sensors on the car, and then the real time sensor data has to create impact for their data center, where they found the software to run all the simulation for these different companies. Uh, and also the email processing. Include that? Um, yeah, so so uh, they have a lot of video screen as well. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So that's a quick overview. And um, as you may probably know, the current uh, supercomputer of the world is called the Summit, and that's from IBM. The software I mean, that managed the workload in Summit is from our brand, is from our technology. Also, it runs the Power AI box, and this, this solution is um, used for also our AI platform. So this is, we have a lot of heritage doing this. And this uh, little supercomputer uh, around the 26,000 GPUs, the next mm -hmm. media GPUs. So right now it's the fastest the supercomputer in the world. You cannot use it. Yeah, you can use it. Well, LBM can use it. We can do it for all the tests. What the test? You can't have a lot of energy in the US. But you'll see as we go later on, we do consider people that are just starting out in AI to all the way to this. So uh, our solution is not flexible. Uh, for the yeah. Google, they have some, like the Google to log in and then test and take the money. For IBM also, they have that kind of. Okay, so so I mean, the, so yeah, commercialized by the, yeah. So for this uh, supercomputer, we build up all uh, UIs So today, we'll, we'll we, this is the plan. Anyhow, let's see how, we, how it goes. So we'll talk about some of the trends and challenges we see in doing AI for the business. And then we'll, we'll go into our solutions stack and go deeply into uh, some of the components, what the components 
uh, do what the value it gives you, and then we'll hopefully talk about some use cases we can share that we see that we have talked with, mm -hmm. and then hopefully we we'll get to do a demo given how much time we have, mm -hmm. okay. and some next steps. Yes. So the rocket yes. chart. Um, we'll give it to the rocket chart. Right. So, so I actually over there showing some uh, old GPU. Yes. Uh, but the point is, uh, uh, AI uh, requires HPC, uh, requires uh, the big engine, which is uh, GPU and the supercomputer, and also require lots of data. Uh, to launch the rocket, you need to put the fuel and the engine. Yeah. So this is an uh, interesting chart. Actually, this is not from IBM. Uh, this is from Google, from a Google paper. Uh, they talk about uh, how to bring the machine learning code to production. And uh, what you can see over there in the middle, there is a small black square that's the machine learning code, uh, say, in your network. Mm -hmm. But in order to bring you, uh, if your network code to production, you need to do a lot more. Uh, right now the situation is uh, the data scientists have spent a lot of time dealing with uh, in infrastructure planning, data commanding, data engineering, uh, have a very little bit of time uh, working on the machine learning code. Uh, that's uh, it's an opportunity for the vendor to provide a platform to improve the productivity for data, data scientists and also uh, achieve time to market for business. And over there, you can see there's infrastructure, there's resource management, there's the data collection, data verification, fish engineering, monitoring. There are other pieces missing, for example, support. The basic is must, no matter you run on the or in the cloud. So there's, there's all sorts of consideration during the AI practice, not just the coding. The mm, yeah, I see. So, so for the, uh, for the, Machine learning, deep learning pipeline, uh, I think we all know there's a uh, data part, data pre-processing part, uh, there's a uh, uh, training part, tuning part, and also instance part. Uh, at a different stage, it has a different uh, challenge. So, to the training, for example, require GPU management, require digital training, uh, hyper parameter tuning, and also ML, also RT to speed up the, the development. Uh, and the instance serving, we will consider hypergenous environments such as CPU, GPU, IPGA, or TensorFlow. And, uh, and overall, you may need a, a multi-tenant environment to support uh, many researchers, many data scientists to uh, collaborate together, and also in the production to support a different application of the business uh, to serve the business purpose. So we will get into some of the, the details on each uh, challenge and how, how, and how IBM will address it. I, I, normally, I, I see, you see the GPU, but you also have the FPGA, and that FPGA will relate with the IoT. Right. I mean, and then try to tailor something like the IoT combined with this. But people are talking about a lot of GPU, but not yeah. so, so many people talk on the FPGA. FPGA is uh, more on the inference side. Mm -hmm. The inference side uh, could be part of the IoT environment, so the inference uh, on the fly. Yeah. Or GPU mean they, uh, for training, because the training is far we need more CPU power. power. Yeah, I see. So we're trying to look at a solution that can help you with the entire cycle. Hey, but the for the hardware, you think that hardware, you do the hardware, or you yeah. buy and so so only the. IBM build a supercomputer. We have IBM uh, power CPU, and uh, we also using the data GPU. And for the PPA, we have some uh, internal technology as well, and so we're working with the third Right, and for our power systems, we work with NVIDIA to have a very fast interconnects between the CPU and the GPU, which will provide you fast performance for the next CPU. Okay, so this is talking about uh, the data sources and and how it comes from different places. It could be structured or unstructured, unstructured and uh, the different types of uh, utilization cases. You've talked about some of the use cases here, the chat box. Yeah, the chat box and uh, the behavior modeling and the vision. So um, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of moving parts, right? And there's a lot of things that 
uh, a data scientist will have to manage. You know, to, to, to get to this point, from, from the data to this point, there's all sorts of things going on in the middle. How do, how do we manage that? How do we control that? So data is only, on this chart, it's only talking about data. But in the chart before, we're seeing the, the code is a little black box in the front. There's lots of things that's going on around it. So, so the the unplanned flow also uh, could be complex, and uh, and over there uh, data preparation, training, tuning, um, and the tuning training can be iterative, and then even after you deploy to the production, you need to still do the scoring and then retrain again. So this whole process. Could be very complex. Uh, the question is whether you could have a platform to simplify uh, the unplanned errors. Also, timing is important too. If you notice, we're, we're taking years and years of data and doing things that needs seconds to respond. Mm -hmm. So your system is is absolutely important to be very high performing and be able to handle the, the amount of data and the amount of computing that's involved in what we're trying to do. So as we all know. The data science is a team sport. Not one person is an expert in everything. So um, you need to be able to provide a solution where people as a team can work together, use the same data, and make, make your data practice more replicable and repeatable and understandable. I see. Um, so the, this chart is uh, from a research paper uh, talking about uh, the computational challenge relative to uh, Accuracy. Um, and you can see there's a rough correlation um, about uh, between the, the model and the computation requirement. Uh, roughly, uh, there's an exception, right? The roughly, the, the bigger the model, the deeper the network, uh, you will have a better accuracy, but which also implies uh, you need a lot more compute, computation power. Um, the size of a bubble uh, represents uh, the, the parameters as well as uh, the uh, operations required to do the computation for every single iteration. I see. Okay. And you can see this is just talking about the image model, yeah. models here. Yeah. So, so, so it's uh, highly computational, mm. uh, but on the other hand, it also requires high performance network. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is an example of VGG. Uh, it has uh, 128 million parameters. It's not even a big model. Uh, but if you want to run on multiple GPU across multiple machines, for example, in this case, a full GPU, you need to transfer a gigabyte of data for uh, every iteration. And the iteration could be very short. Uh, GPU become more powerful. We talk about uh, 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to transfer a gigabyte of data every 100 milliseconds, it will require very efficient communication and the distribution. And IBM over there have a lot of reservation on both on hardware as well as the software. So how, given all the challenges, what is the solution, right? What is, what is the pitch here? Yeah. Uh, we put forth enterprise deep learning platform. So the idea here is we want to create a, we understand that artificial intelligence is, is challenging, right? Not everybody are experts, and we want to reduce the parts that are unnecessarily complicated. And we want to leave, we want to give this data scientist his time or her time to do the science, not do the management, not to worry about how to get my, my flows faster or where I get the data, anything like that. We're trying to simplify the whole experience from people that are just experimenting with AI to larger corporations that's trying to get some business out of, business value out of uh, the AI. So um, this is part of the solution. Um, we just want to first highlight the Power AI family because we represent that, that uh, the product lines. So in the middle, you'll see Power AI at base, which includes some pre-compiled open source frameworks. So some of the very uh, popular DL frameworks out there in the market, TensorFlow Cafe, PyTorch, they're all uh, compiled and available for you to download to use with the power systems that we have. Also, um, we have done some integrations and advancements for the open source frameworks, such as logic memory support. 
we'll be talking a little bit about what large memory support means in this case. Uh, below, uh, you have Power AI Enterprise. And what that is, it provides you with enterprise-grade solutions associated with doing deep learning. Some of the things are cluster-wide virtualizations. Uh, Young mentioned auto, auto, um, auto hyperparameter tuning and optimization and search. You have also um, on the right-hand side deep learning impact module, which is a add-on to IBM Spectrum Conductor. And what that is is, is your deep learning workflow management. It helps you do. Um, it, it gives you the, some of the the ease of use for from data ingestion to model training to model testing to also inference and also the life cycle management of the models themselves. And on top, we have Power AI Vision. Power AI Vision is used for uh, image use cases. It helps you do um, labeling and um, of, of images by you labeling some of the subset of the tool, of, of the data set, and it will help you label the rest of your data set. So why are you focus on only the image? Well, this is just one of the use case. This is just one of the, 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 the application layer yeah. of, of the entire stack. Because this is another. about the of the application I mean, in the, they also have IoT, also have yeah. speech, yes. 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 or yes. the data side, but right. they so, focus on that. So this is Vision, Power AI Vision from IBM, uh, but IBM, Power AI, and Power AI Enterprise platform mm -hmm. also support a third party application. Mm -hmm. For example, in machine learning domain, we support H2O, mm -hmm. uh, and within IBM, we also have uh, data science experience. Those yeah, all the yeah. different applications can run on top of this platform. Okay. And so also the WhatsApp, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Watson, some of the WhatsApp, Watson service. Watson also yeah. Yeah. So um, with the solution that we're talking to about today, mm -hmm. it's all about high performance computing. It's talking about use of use. It's just talking about how do you efficiently run your deep learning workload. So in terms of management and, and deployment of our solution, you can install our solution in a matter of hours. Over, over lunch, you could have something up and running and installed on, on our systems. Data preparation. The time spent on, on data preparation can be 80% of your whole entire practice. That yeah. drops to 30% yeah. with, our, <laughs> with our solution yeah. in some cases. And uh, in terms of the building training and optimization of your models, mm. we're speeding that up as well. We're, ta we're trying to take it from weeks to days, depending yeah. on your data yeah. set, of course, or even hours. Yeah. And then deploy an inference. We're trying to create, make a very uh -huh. easy experience with an inference as well. And uh, obviously, after you have your inference model, it doesn't mean you're done. Your job is not done. You, you have to keep training your models. You have to keep it accurate. Maintain accuracy is yeah. one of the yeah. main um, things that you need to consider when you're, you're building a, a model, right? Yeah. So that, that's, that our system can help you with that reiterative process of retraining your models as well as your data. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah um, so we develop of a solution and platform mm -hmm. actually based on a lot of uh, customer engagement and the customer requirement. Uh, we right now we have uh, many uh, customers using Power AI solution and also using Power AI enterprise uh, mm -hmm. to deliver business value. For example, uh, some of the top, the biggest the banks in the world, mm -hmm. uh, the, the supercomputer center uh, in other industries as well. So this is a representation of the stack. Uh, there, there's a deeper level representation of the, the deep learning stack. And what you have is you have a data layer that's mm -hmm. called IBM Spectrum Scale. Yeah. And then you have your systems, Power AI systems. Yeah. And then it runs on in the Red Hat Enterprise. Or wow. Red Hat <laughs> And then you got your, your deep learning frameworks. Wow. So um, as you can see, it, it is an entire slack stack. From, from the application all the way down to your data. Okay, and that gives you, um, the idea is to reduce complexity and to improve your, your efficiency and your productivity. And we're trying to get your, your models to run to accuracy as fast as possible, because that's, that's the goal of building a, a model. You want to be as accurate as possible, have, your, have the right hyper parameters set and, and found and trained against your data. And all that is obviously supported by IBM. So now you have 
a system where it's not just built on open source, where you're, you would have to rely on the community to do some of the supporting once you have problems, IBM will be able to provide you support for the frameworks that we distribute as well, mm. and as well as the entire system. I see. Yes, and we do provide consulting on top of the stack. Yeah, and then you take the service for, I mean, you provide the service back there for the mental layer, and somebody can build a program on the top of that and call the a API. That's right. And then we call the API, and do the training, do the tuning, and then deploy it to the production. Yeah. So you can do it programmatically as well as you could do it through our GUI, which is a, it's a simple uh, single pane of glass for the whole entire workflow. It's in one place for multiple data scientists. Yeah. Do you have a free, free access of that? Or for the academic? We, we, I think we can provide. Uh, we can provide. And then after that, I, I mean, uh, for the student, I think for the first time, when they yeah. use, if they get used to this one in the future, when they get that, they can continue <laughs> using this kind of thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is something. Yeah. Uh, we may have an academic program. Uh, yeah. Indeed, uh, sometimes we also want the idea to come to give a talk or teaching like the workshop, teach there how to access the data via this kind of thing. This is another one. I think I know sometimes we have relation that you said about a uh, teacher should have to go to the IBM for learning and then after that they back to the school and then teach the student how to use the IBM. Uh, platform or something. But sometimes also I want to invite the uh, idea to come in and decide and keep it all directly to the student or the teacher there. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, we're learning from uh, uh, you guys as well. You are the leader in the uh, academia community. Yeah. And uh, uh, we always uh, learn a lot from, from, uh, from you both here, from research institution and also from our customers. In the past, we got the a CD ROM in the uh, 10 or for we got the CD ROM, but you send the CD ROM for to us, and then the CD ROM is inside the CD ROM. At that time, we have a local also give us to use this. Yeah, but it depends on the teacher who will teach or not. Sometimes the teacher run to the software free software instead of using this kind of thing. something. Yeah. That that happened in the past, yeah. but now it's become the cloud service, and then they think it can be easy for us to how to access to the I don't have the uh, um, like uh, online um, um, education and class uh, 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 free service, free access. Free access, I see. I see. Okay, that's good. So uh, we also consider the, your your adoption journey. Not every single group, not every single company is on the same learning curve or adoption phase. You have people that are doing experiments, just one machine and, and one, one data scientist running on one box. Very small data there, just very small data set there. Then you have a production case where your, your model is starting to show some value, so you want to put it in production and see what happens. Right? So you end up having uh, more of a consideration for uh, security and you want to potentially use multi, multiple nodes for, for your, your different uh, practices and your different uh, tasks involved with doing your deep learning and you want to have a cluster environment. And then when you start expanding and have a team of data scientists, you need to figure out how to manage that. And you, need, you have to have more consideration about the model iteration as it matures, how do you, how do you keep it uh, accurate, how do you improve its accuracy, um, inference, how, how do you deploy the inference, where do you deploy the inference. There's lots of different considerations as you move down that journey. And all of the different considerations, are, are all the different steps have different considerations. So the stack that we're talking about today can help you with every single step. Our stack can be installed on one single machine. And the benefits we give you is the acceleration on, on the hardware as well as the ease of use. So we help you manage the data, help, help you do the auto um, hyperparameter tuning. So um, you even tend to drive value with just installing elements as one server. I think the thing about to have the, to help to, to use the IBM power AI for doing something like the contest or help the, the class to teach them and how to use for the experiment. And after they know this one maybe they can extend to the yeah. 
maybe we can have collaboration on this part. Yeah. Right. Uh, for example, why the data and then use probably I for contest yeah. or yeah. something. Right, yeah. right. And all this, uh, yeah. yeah, like the lecture, mm -hmm. introductory to them to how to access and try how to use them. Yeah. Uh, so the so we can help these two more. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, thank you. So this is a more of a, a nice level of view of uh, the, stack. the stack, right? Yeah. Uh, at the bottom, they have a data layer. Uh, it's about the IBM storage, high-performance file system, cloud object storage, as well as non-IBM uh, data, data source. And then uh, in the middle, uh, this layer, uh, it talks about class manager, resource manager, because uh, we do need to manage multiple machines uh, CPU, memory, and the GPU, uh, those machines are expensive. We need to make a good use of the, the resources. And uh, on that layer, it also supports a different runtime. Uh, if you look at the machine learning AI world, uh, there could be Spark, uh, is a runtime for data per, uh, processing, as well as the Spark based machine learning. And then Python. Uh, is uh, a foundation to support all the different deep learning framework, including the stack inside of Python. And uh, we have a set up for our value one, including digital training, including GPU management support, including uh, containers. And on top, we support a whole set of uh, machine learning and deep learning framework. Um, the layer above the framework uh, is the workflow the workflow of uh, uh, your machine learning, deep learning pipeline starting from notebook, uh, coding, to data pre-processing, to training, to tuning, uh, retrain, yeah. visualization, uh, inference, production, delivery. Yeah. So we have a whole set of interface data. We can highlight a few capabilities. Uh, and then you could have uh, different uh, application interface different uh, domain-specific application running on top on this platform. So as we mentioned earlier, you asked about, oh, how come you just uh, focus on vision? Mm -hmm. Well, the stack doesn't just yeah. focus on vision. As you can see up here, there's different applications. So the vision tool we talked about. Yes. So that's a part of the power family. So that's mm -hmm. why we called it out specifically. But there's also IBM data science experience. Mm -hmm. And that is for collaboration of data scientists on a project. And a comment H2O. H2O is uh, a third party, but they are a partner for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are seeing a lot of uptake with H2O in the industry because they have a concept called drivers, which is very, very powerful, where they, they can help do a lot of the machine learning uh, against the complexities. So um, in summary, what does the deep learning platform give you? Um, which very simple four things. Right. The faster time to result, you increase your investment on your resources. That's including people, including your data, as well as your infrastructure. We're not just talking about the piggy bank. Right? And also simplified management. We have a single control plane for, for the entire um, practice. So you have the entire workflow manageable and uh, understandable in a GUI, as well as um, accessible by APIs. And uh, of course, we wrap that all up with enterprise security because we are IBM. We understand what, how, what is important in terms of creating an enterprise solution for, for our clients. Um, in the next section, we're going to zoom in just a, a few highlights. Uh, we, we cannot uh, uh, go through all the end-to-end components. We just uh, uh, look at a few components. Uh, so first of all, we're working with the uh, open source community. Uh, we contribute as well. Uh, we lead the open power uh, initiative uh, for the hardware and uh, chip design. And uh, on the open source, not only big data, but also contributing to the deep learning uh, framework as well. Uh, next chart. So, uh, so uh, in the next a uh, few chart, I will cover some of the performance differentiation, uh, some of the job management differentiation, as well as uh, capability for tuning and uh, hyperparameter search. Um, so this is uh, another view uh, of uh, endpoint flow. 
and uh, this flow is a color coded. Uh, at the very bottom, uh, it's almost like a cluster foundation. You need to have uh, a platform so that you can support a different user running AI as a service. Mm -hmm. And the bottom piece gave you that. Uh, gave you the resource management, the workload management, the GPU management, the multi-user and the security. And then uh, on the top, uh, I think the deep, uh, the dark blue color are the open source component. And then the light blue uh, are some of the innovation by the way from IBM. Uh, I will cover pre-processing, hyperparameter tuning and search, digital learning, as well as the inferencing. Uh, so, so data is the first step. This is how we can make uh, data access uh, simpler. Uh, we have um, uh, previewed the connection uh, to different data source. Mm -hmm. uh, we support a different data format uh, that used for, uh, by the deep learning frameworks. And then on top, we uh, build a certain capability tooling allow you to, for example, uh, split the data in training, test, uh, and the validation uh, data set uh, using algorithm like holdout, uh, cross-validation, bootstrapping, uh, do the randomization, uh, do the uh, data augmentation as well. So, so this is uh, one example uh, why such a tool is useful for deep learning, deep learning uh, applications. And uh, this is a uh, um, this is a use case of working with hospital and also several uh, leading uh, medical image radiology uh, department. Uh, over there, uh, you have a um, larger picture from, uh, from an electro microscope, and the image is really dark, uh, large, and uh, it's a 70K by 60K, uh, where you need to convert into the format uh, consumable mm -hmm. by uh, TensorFlow by the frameworks as well as the model. So we need to do the transformation. And this is another simple transformation. You will have to shrink the picture or split the picture, still maintain the uh, coordinate, which is the ground truth from the doctor. And then we need to do the uh, data shuffling and, uh, and the data split. So, so we have a tool allow you to upload the data, do the pre-processing using large-scale cluster, and then they can visualize uh, to see uh, to manage the data uh, effectively. The next chart is uh, is a hyperparameter search and optimization. Mm. Um, so, so those are the uh, some of the algorithms already in our GA product, and. Uh, and uh, we all know hyperparameter, uh, uh, good selection of a hyperparameter could mean they are, they are not a difference of all, uh, deep learning application training performance. And, uh, and to come out a good set of hyperparameter also difficult um, for, for data scientists and the non expert And we come out of this tool uh, to, do the automatic, uh, to do the automatic search using a uh, statistical approach. Uh, we support a random search, uh, tree-paste the uh, tree uh, pass and estimator, as well as the Bayesian. Uh, we, uh, we launched multiple round of job in the cluster to do the parallel search, and uh, based on the previous uh, round of uh, result, we determine how to search in the next round. So this is uh, our initial capability in our GA product. Uh, actually, I did a presentation at Spark AI Summit uh, we also have uh, auto ML mm -hmm. come out where we do the network search. Mm -hmm. uh, not only network search, we also doing high performance uh, neural network search mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, making it uh, driven by application SRA and service mm -hmm. So, so besides the background search, uh, we also have uh, interactive uh, monitoring, advisor, and uh, uh, optimizer. Um, and chart. So, so example of that will be uh, you have a training run uh, going on right now, mm -hmm. and uh, we have visualization to see yeah, yeah, yeah. how things are going, why the loss is going down, yeah. accuracy going up. Uh, you can look at uh, different layers, uh, <laughs> different layers of uh, yeah. uh, your really network, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, if there's a problem, uh -huh. then you should do an early stop. 
Wow. And the way you can detect uh, all the different early stop scenario. So you don't have to waste time waiting for two days, and in the end, you don't have a convergence. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in this case, we detect the uh, underfitting, and uh, we even provide a recommendation on how to fix the problem. I see. So yeah. this is uh, about uh, interactive tuning. Uh, so this is part of the reason why you could take your training from, from months to weeks to hours. You're seeing a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just I see. I see. So, uh, so, so I actually have quite a number of examples, and this is a simple example. Uh, initially, uh, it ran into an overflow situation, and uh, we provided a recommendation to change the clip uh, gradient. And then uh, later on, in the second uh, uh, iteration, um, that problem is gone. Uh, but it, it has a new problem. Uh, it's underfitting, and we detect that. We uh, ask you to stop the training run and uh, give uh, advice and recommendation, and uh, the user fixes the problem. In the third run, they have a good result. Nice. Yeah. So, so by going through uh, this uh, iterative process and uh, with uh, all the visualization and uh, optimization tool, uh, uh, you can have your uh, model development uh, productively improve second. So this is another cool feature we already have in GA. Um, this is about uh, how we can run uh, distributed uh, deep learning effectively in a production context. We call it uh, EDT, uh, Elastic Distributed Training. Uh, and uh, we all know that when you run distributed training, mm -hmm. um, say using TensorFlow distributed mode, it's very static. Mm -hmm. When you start running a, a GPU, it cannot change. Mm -hmm. If you lose a GPU, or uh, you, you, you want to run some, uh, somebody else's uh, job, you will lose mm -hmm. the entire uh, result. Right. So in this case, we can make the deep learning training elastic. And if you have a competing job coming in based on the priority, we can release the CPU to a new user and then shrink the GPU allocation to the existing jobs gracefully. And automatically. Automatically and without impacting the, the, the accuracy and the convergence. So, so if you need to uh, want your job run faster and uh, you just uh, add more GPU, uh, the, the workload, the, the job will automatically go faster. And uh, there's another case very significant. Uh, say you have uh, Keras uh, um, uh, framework uh, and the model running already running on one GPU, mm -hmm. and uh, we can take uh, such a model to run multiple GPU automatically, and so that you can have fast, re uh, fast to market, uh, fast result. Right, and uh, that works for several different frameworks. Some mm -hmm. frameworks require one or two line changes, some of them don't have any. Um, code changes from the single server model. Um, one of the more popular complaints in the, the model training uh, process is the, the lack of control. Once you start using the whole machine for one training, mm -hmm. you cannot use that machine until it's done. There's, there's very little control. So depending on how long that training takes, you're basically left with waiting or if you have something more urgent, you're, you're left with the decision of whether you give up on your first job or not. And with our system, we're, we're able to help you elegantly manage and share your infrastructure across multiple nodes. If for the first time we need to allocate how many TPU you want to use? So or it, just it can be one, mm. it can be four, it can be eight or 16. Mm. So, uh, so maybe right now uh, clusters are busy and then initially you get one, but whenever uh, other people free up results, you can get more. Now maybe you are an important user because you are the president of the, yeah. <laughs> uh, the association and the yeah. school, yeah. and you have an important job, you can change the priority of your job, and then it will automatically okay. get more GPU, make your job go faster. So they learn, they learn so no tasks at the same time, anyway, but they swap, swap the usage, automatically. Right. I mean, uh, or, or you occupy, for one user for that yeah. period and do it for the other one for the other period. So, so well, it can be all concurrent place. So mm -hmm. in this case, you have a two job all yes. running yeah. concurrently. 
and then uh, initially this uh, job number one get a GPU, yeah. and then when second job coming in uh, because of equal priority, the second job will grab four GPU, and the first first job will down to remaining four. So the boss job will concurrent running, and the boss job will uh, continue running with the convergence and uh, without uh, uh, impact to the aggregate. And this one is the shared memory. Shared memory. I, I mean, uh, you need to swap the data in the data out when you swap between the, the job. Right? You, you, you have two job running, they have yeah. their own data. Right, 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 and right. when they swap, so they have to reload the data Wait. or their shared share memory. Yeah. That makes it faster. Uh, we, we, we handle that uh, automatically. So, so developer only need to figure out the model, which is the graph, right? Mm -hmm. And the developer should should uh, do not need to think about the infrastructure and the data ingest. Mm -hmm. uh, we do that purposely because we don't believe developer uh, can just uh, put uh, how many nodes and the GPU mm -hmm. in their code. Mm -hmm. We want to create a decouple of uh, model and the infrastructure and the data set, so that your model will be portable. Uh, can move from a uh, developing environment, a single GPU, yeah. to a production and multiple GPU, or even to the cloud. Right? Uh -huh. so, so this uh, decoupling gives you the portability, and, uh, and, the, and this infrastructure will handle the GPU allocation, uh, initialization, and the data ingest. Yeah, yeah. And the developer don't even need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I see. It's yeah. We're talking about scale. Um, this is an example of a single system that has um, those thinking about 28,000 cores to, to be required to handle some other peak workloads. And by using the shared infrastructures, they're significant, they could significantly save on their infrastructure by using only 16,000 and get their jobs done. So using uh, our scheduler is also uh, more predictable. So this is a third-party benchmark that was done using Spectrum Conductor against uh, open source Yarn and ASOS to see uh, how our scheduling performs. The blue on this chart is Spectrum Conductor 210, which is an older release. We just came out with 2.3 uh, a couple weeks ago. Green is uh, scheduling on, I believe that was um, ASOS, and red is Yarn. So as you can see, the throughput is a lot better with Spectrum Conductor. And it's also much more predictable because out here in space, you'll see the different open source schedulers having different types of performances for different tasks. Meanwhile, we're much more consistent. So, uh, so, so this is a really talk about uh, hardware and software call optimization. Um, um, on your right hand side is called uh, large scale digital training and over there uh, we have a test to up to 256 GPU and you can see the, the scaling, scaling chart, almost linear scaling uh, with 95% uh, uh, of uh, scaling efficiency. Uh, that will require uh, very efficient communication across all the different GPU and the different worker. And we have algorithm innovation, we also have a hardware acceleration. Um, on your left hand side, uh, it's about the large model support. Uh, this is needed when you have um, a very large model, uh, hard to fit into GPU memory, and when you have a large input data, for example, large brain scan, large uh, uh, X-ray uh, picture. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in that case, uh, how to run that model and against a, a big data set. Mm -hmm. And uh, GPU memory is uh, limited, and uh, with the NVLink between CPU and GPU mm -hmm. uh, IBM box, we enable access to system memory to, you, to use your you know, two terabyte of uh, address space on the system uh, to enable to run the large model and the large data set. Mm -hmm. So this is a quick description of our high performance a uh, st storage system called ESS. Mm -hmm. It is a policy com compliant uh, file system. It could handle different types of storage media, including your expensive flash all the way down to even tape. 
Now, um, some of the industries that we see have a requirement of, of keeping data for a very long time. So you might want to look into something like object storage for, for that retention. So our file system is able to transparently handle the different types of storage and uh, move the data from one to another as you need. Also, uh, we have a single namespace, so you, can, you are able to span across multiple regions with the same system and have it work seamlessly. So this is very important if you have um, different sites using the same data set. <laughs> this is a, quite a wordy chart. Um, this is a summary of the Power AI Enterprise Solution. Uh, feel free to take a picture and read it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure we can take a picture or not. <laughs> yeah. So, you take it. so you take it just maybe we high level again. Video. Yeah, video. <laughs> it's already on the video. Yes. So, faster than the results. Uh, with all the different innovations and all the improvements and integrations we've done, hardware to software to framework. Uh, we're, we're achieving faster time results. Also, uh, the distributed system is very, very powerful in this in this area. We're trying to reduce the administration costs. We're trying to share the infrastructure. We're trying to make sure that the, the environment is easy to use and it's less work on the administrator to help the data scientist with, oh, hey, I need another GPU, or somebody is using all the GPUs, do something about it. We're trying to prevent those things from happening. Uh, increased resource utilization, again, I bring control of your, your, your system and uh, have, having the power to have a multi-tenant solution for, for your different workloads. You might have different projects going on that want to use the same systems. Students might have access to only one or two machines and you need to properly manage that. Okay, one person can get his homework done and everybody else can't. Uh, we don't want to have see that happen. And to enter, uh, enterprise solution, as mentioned before, we we have uh, a comprehensive stack of IBM solutions that are fully supported by IBM with consulting available if um, that need should arise. And we're proving we have heritage in this space, we have heritage in HPC, so um, you can rest assured that the performance is, is um, it's there and it's proven. And we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, scheduling is scheduling. That's very important. So let's talk about a public use case. Hey, this is a use case, the real use case. Well, yes, we're talking. Yeah. Is there any specific industries that you're interested in, or all the industries are, are of interest? Any, but now we have nobody on the phone. Okay. <laughs> sure here. But I think uh, what we can say is uh, I, uh, the point may be uh, it's so complicated. I mean, when someone uses this one, so how to. Yeah, lower, lower this kind of the right. barrier in order right. to use uh, this system. We call it you have uh, so many pieces, yeah, right? component inside. The, most of the components are installed. Uh, uh, conductor and deep learning is only two, two packages that you install. Mm -hmm. I've installed it under two hours, to be honest with you. Two um, hours in the Yes. Once you, you have two pieces in the Spectrum Conductor and DLI, really is a conductor package and a deep learning impact package and it's two two packages they install it's two commands. Two hours. Yeah, two hours. And to install a system and you can actually log into the, the GUI, the, the web GUI interface, and you can start clicking around. Because we have a GUI interface it's very simple. I can show you. Can you show some of the GUI? Uh, I can, but let's go through some um, use cases first, and we can show the GUI. You can see mm -hmm. how easy it is. It, 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 it is so okay. The, the whole, whole thing is about uh, uh, simplicity. Mm -hmm. Simplicity uh, so that the data scientist will click a button and mm -hmm. get a no boogie environment. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. start coding TensorFlow or you know, PyTorch in the notebook, run on single GPU. Yeah. And then uh, you want to do a large scale GPU, you just click another button uh, to do the training on multiple GPU. And, uh, and once uh, you finish the training, uh, the model is there, width of there, you can click button to publish. Yeah. During the training, it also has a visualization to see uh, how things are going. And if uh, the user doesn't have an idea about the uh, what's learning rate, uh, you know, the hyperparameter tuning can automatically generate a set of uh, good, uh, good set of uh, hyperparameter so that uh, you just input into the, the training room and uh, get a better result. Right, so the whole thing is about the sim uh, simplicity 
uh, if you don't have this type of tools, uh, you will need to compile a TensorFlow, install your own machine, somehow manage the CUDA driver, make the GPU yeah. working. And, and then uh, later on, you need to VI uh, and uh, uh, write some yeah, code. Yeah. And you have a data coming from the enterprise warehouse. You need to maybe using some C code, dump into a file, and writing some uh, tensor uh, uh, I mean, uh, Python script uh, to, to manipulate the data a little bit and uh, make it uh, suitable for training. Those will be all manual. And this is only even for a single person. Uh, what if uh, uh, you have uh, two machines, uh, but you have uh, five students uh, want to use those two machines? Uh, how, how are you going to more coordinate? And in the enterprise uh, context, how you do the secure access of the data set, the data source? So, 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 so the, the whole purpose of this platform is to make it simple. To right. Right. We're, 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 show, we're showing the components to show you that we've taken the, the complexity Managed it so you don't have to manage it. I see. Yeah. So, okay. so, so this is a bank. Uh, bank already have uh, uh, existing business uh, where they need to uh, do the optimization, prediction, forecasting uh, for say deposit, uh, for uh, product upsell, co-sell opportunities, uh, for uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, they are already doing that. Uh, they are already using traditional predictive analytic tools doing that, for example, SAS. And then here, uh, they have uh, this uh, innovative team from their quantitative research also apply AI in the same domain, uh, even to challenge the production model, uh, to do the validation of a production model. And the, the benefit from us is we provide the end one the training and the tuning environment and to enable all the tens or even hundreds of uh, data scientists and clients to effect effectively building their model and the move to production. Mm -hmm. So, so there are more use cases in the banking uh, area for uh, identity a customer identity mapping for uh, risk analytics for uh, uh, capital adequacy. Uh, uh, stress testing, uh, I think we don't need to go through yeah. details. So we're yeah. just going through some more the call it does. Yeah. So this is the whole pipeline, right, from the data pre-processing using Spark, using Power AI for training, and then getting production. This is a, a credit card. Uh, I think it's a credit card uh, use case. Yeah. So this is a fun one. Um, there's another retail bank that's concerned about security of their ATMs. So what they want to do is utilize deep learning to figure out if somebody is trying to do something that is not really legal, or if they're, doing some, they're trying to do something that they're not supposed to be doing. So in, in this model, it's trying to detect whether a person is trying to obfuscate his face. Oh, okay. This is and one of our good. developers in uh, IBM. <laughs> We, we don't use uh, customer data or customer image. This is all the developer. And we don't hire criminals to give us examples either. This is uh, another example of using the same system for a different, um, different types of deep learning and use cases. Um, this one, there's multiple teams that are, are going into the same system with, with our software. We're just going to go by this a little faster. Uh, uh, another example in in trade and uh, mortgage, uh, stock exchanges. This stock, is a fun one. Stock market prediction uh, using historical data, uh, the train, uh, the time series data to train a long short term memory model, and so that it can predict the up and down of the market at 10 minutes ahead of the market. Uh, of course, uh, we haven't figured out how to make money out of it, uh, but uh, our client, the partner, will have. Right. And so this is an example that is not an image. Right. This is this is a non-image example. And the bank. Um, this is a cancer research. Uh, you know, for radiologists um, to uh, to automate to simplify uh, to use of this tool to detect the tumor cluster. Right. And uh, the screen. 
the screen captures you see here are from the product. So you see that each of the, the stages are managed with the with the interface. So uh, this is a, yeah another example of how to use the deep learning to save people time. Looking at a manufacturing defect is very difficult if you're just relying on humans to do so. So IoT image data comes comes into the picture, and we help with taking those image data and figure out uh, points of defects. Tomorrow City, yet mm, another image. Yes. Everybody knows. Uh, supermarkets and retail chains, this is, there's a few examples that are embedded in here, but one of the interesting things is um, replenishment su supply, Replen replenishment of inventory. That, that is a, a big business because there's a lot of loss involved with an out of stock issue. And by applying uh, deep learning te techniques, you can try to mitigate that problem. Another one is recognizing um, guns using an image again. Uh, last one. This is uh, for maintenance. Uh, I have a pipeline of power grid. Uh, uh, this is a uh, solution we implemented in Asia, uh, sending drones to the power grid to look at uh, whether there is uh, any problem with uh, 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 the transmission line. And if we, uh, this technology also being applied for other scenarios as well. Uh, we have uh, government uh, in uh, agriculture department, uh, forestry department in North America sending drones to the remote area to detect whether there's uh, forest fire. Uh, and similarly, uh, we have partner looking at uh, whether the image can be used to detect a shark on the, on the beach. We oh. also have a client that's also detecting whales and trying to look at um, the movement in whales and doing some conservation about what they learn from it. So it's not just about banks, it's, there is a lot of social impact. This specific case I really like because it's saving lives. People are not climbing up on the on the power lines to see if there's problems. We could use robot we could use technologies to, to prevent any injuries and any, anything that uh, would be basically a good outcome. In the future maybe it's become smaller. Smaller one. I mean the drone sometimes is quite big. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it can be a smaller one. Smaller, and then, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then yeah, more safe. But we're getting there, right? Mm, mm. Right, there's some students doing this also. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. they get uh, the image processing of how to detect the power tower right. and the problem of the tower. Right? Use the image processing. Yeah, now, now, uh, now to uh, work with your team uh, yeah. on all the different uh, opportunities. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Capcom, <laughs> this is the Capcom. I see, Capcom. So, Inside. usually we talk about next steps next. So there's AI discovery workshops with IBM, and we can also uh, partner up and do some POCs to see how we can help. Yeah. Okay. So this is an example of how sometimes what we do in workshop for clients. We, we talk about, okay, what is really magic? Some people think AI can solve the world. Right? So we need to level set with the client, or level set with, with people that are interested. And we talk about uh, different concepts, so uh, everybody understands what's uh, what is the science that we're working with? Then we go into some use cases and possibilities and uh, work from there. So it's very systematic. Even when is this one? Sorry, I just... Pardon? When, when this is... This is, this, uh, is a, this is a sample agenda that we do for clients. So we oh, go, I see. It's, it's not it's a, any, any, it's not a yeah. session. It's just any, anybody any, that, that's interested I see, in, I see. in the staff we can work with them. Yes. Uh, so actually, we partner uh, with the media. We have uh, done a lot of uh, DIY event. Uh, I, I I did a few uh, in New York. Uh, yeah, I did a few in California. California, um, Boston, um, Chicago, and uh, I did one in London. Right. So that definitely uh, we're working with uh, uh, a local team. Uh, across the different regions, the different countries, have the time. That was the Well, you can work with the local team too to have something set up. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
done any uh, separately individually in the yeah. conference? Uh, and there, there could be yeah conference for example we present at a different conference uh, either GTC event or Spark uh, AI summit or O'Reilly AI summit but we also have a meetup we just had one in Singapore with the Singapore Innovate uh, on the AI uh, meetup and this could be more of a structure the half day full day uh, workshop uh, for certain industry or even certain clients. So you charge or do the attendee also for those charges? It's ideal sponsor. The, the ones that we have done, the charge is smaller, like a social yeah. charge. 